welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofdahl. And today we're talking about Candyman. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I was times. like, you have to. You have to. But I guess that's what silly white girls do is what they're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> we're just def- fair. Yeah. We're definitely not going to do it. We're going to um, <laughs> take the message of the movie, which is not just that. So many messages, but uh, live by them. My goodness. Okay. We got to see this uh, opening night. And it was glorious. And the surround sound was amazing. Yeah. Apparently, it's like a certain kind of surround sound that you said you hadn't got yeah. to listen to before. So that's cool. I didn't realize that my theater had that. So, woohoo. But you know, something that was funny that I loved was that they accidentally had the 1992 Candyman poster yeah. <laughs> on the, um, like, what do you call that? The thing outside. Yeah, the screen. The, I don't know. And it's like, you know... It's on video now. It's not not like the old days where it's just a poster. Right. So they messed up and had the 1992 Candyman poster, which, I mean, I vibe that. Yeah. I mean, but I wasn't going to be mad if we ended up seeing that in the theater. But (laughs) let me tell you, Nia DaCosta is a queen. She wrote and directed this, and she's amazing. Like, holy crap, the opening sequence? I mean, we're going to spoiler. Oh, yeah. As usual, this is spoiler- Spoilery, so if you haven't watched it, like, go watch it and then come back and listen. Uh, so, yes, uh, if uh, if you want to know, absolutely, 1,000%, we loved it. There you go. Now we're getting into spoilers. The opening sequence, the music, the, how they had the credits flipped slash mirrored, the casting, the directing. What can I say? <laughs> you know... What I love about this movie and the original Candyman is that it was written by a Brit, obviously, Clive Barker, the Forbidden, the story that it's based on, but it was so Americanized in the sense that it's really about the projects in America, which, you know, obviously it was written to take place in Britain, um, the story and so I love how it sort of exposes the problems of American and specifically Chicago projects the way people are kind of put in these places and then forgotten and I just like how that is in the 1992 version that's obviously in this version and now we get to have this whole idea of gentrification and how that kind of further um does not further the people in the community. And it's just like, there's all that going on, but then there's just like crazy ass kills and blood and gore and body horror and everything. Oh oh my gosh. And the way they chose to show the stories and the past, very similar to the first movie, but the puppetry. And so they're not, they could have, well, I don't know, legally, but they could have literally shown clips from the first movie, but they didn't. It was all shown through this shadowy puppetry work. And it was so brilliant. And then, of course, because they're in the art world, everything felt like, I mean, and it is a piece of art in mm-hmm. every scene and every sequence and all of the art that they chose to show within the movie. It's so layered. And, of course, before the movie even starts, we have those mirrored um, production company mm-hmm. um, what are, shots or whatever. And then throughout the whole movie, mirrors are used to such a beautiful aesthetic yes and they're playing mind tricks with us because you think you're viewing the scene one way and then you realize you've been viewing the scene through the mirror through the camera yes and it's like even that is layered and we have this character who's an artist and like you said that sort of um, elevates the world and makes the world feel all Mm -hmm. the more artistic And right away, you know, we see him and his partner and her brother and his partner, and they seem like cool people that you want to party with. And, you know, they really make you right away empathize with them. And then we get to go down this dark sort of body horror, which I really liked because we are seeing things from a different perspective. Of course, in Candyman, you know, we are seeing it from Helen's Um, white lady PhD student perspective but now we get to kind of see it from people who he's from the south side of Chicago he didn't know that he lived in Cabrini Green but he didn't grow up there and 
now we're seeing it from this whole other way. And so then there's this body horror element that I just loved because obviously Candyman in 1992, you know, he's, he's got the hook, he's got the bees, all of that. But we kind of get to watch this character turn into him. And it is so scary that the decisions they made where his skin almost looks like um, beeswax. Oh my God. That, uh, that was an element that I just loved in this movie. Yes. I I mean, I feel like that too, it's all, uh, you know, meta- from metaphors and mirrors and, and just gorgeously shot. And the, like you said, the special effects makeup, every, every choice was, was just blowing my mind. The, uh, I'm going to get into a major spoiler, but we both said we were trying to figure it out and it didn't hit us until the moment that they revealed it which is great that he was the baby i know i said to you i'm like i felt so dumb that i couldn't figure that out but i don't think we're alone (laughs) yeah i was like oh it's like an ancestor or something yeah i'm sure some people figured it out but i did not until that very moment even when she was like oh no you were born you know and and i knew that meant something i knew that was important but i didn't know it was the baby and now I have to go back and watch Candyman again. You watched it kind of recently, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that's so amazing. That's cool. Oh. Yeah. So I have to go back and watch it, and I have to make Luke watch it since I didn't realize he's never seen it. Now, just last week we had a Q and A episode, and we were talking about who we w- we would we had to pick like who would be our boyfriend or something from a horror <laughs> movie. I can't remember the question, but. I, uh, one of our answers, well, we both said Candyman would be so loyal. Yeah. He'd be a great boyfriend. And you know what? He. I stick by that. And, like this end <laughs> sequence where she's in the freaking back of the police car and she's like, let me see myself in the mirror. And she knows it's time. Oh she my has God. to use the power. And this sort of idea of him is like this, this anti folk hero. I kind of love it. Yeah. Like, because obviously um, Candyman is up to bad things. And I was thinking about that as, as I was watching it, because this is really much a, very much a sequel. Um, because, you know, they're talking about Helen Lyle. They're talking, he was the baby. So obviously this is a sequel, not a remake. Um, so Candyman has been up to bad stuff. We know he's killed people who didn't deserve it. But that's kind of what makes him complicated and interesting because then he comes to her rescue and kills all those cops who were all jerks. Yeah. (laughs) And I, not to say that they all deserved it. The one in the car was, you know, obviously problematic. He needed needed a hook in the belly, but, um, but it, it kind of makes for that villain who is not just like a black or white, so to speak. I don't mean race, but like, you know, he's in that gray area where he can actually maybe help this community in a strange sort of way. Is that, is that possible? Yeah, yeah. I know. That's why it's so good. Think about the, the death scene in, in the, uh, in the art gallery with the couple. Oh my God. Wasn't that That amazing? That was so fun. See, that's, what I love is, you know, obviously there is that sort of like elevated aesthetic and it's very serious at times and there's like big social, you know, commentary to be made, but then there's just some freaking fun kills. Like the girls in, I, you know, they probably didn't deserve to die, but that was fun. Yeah, in the, yeah, the restroom. <laughs> in the restroom in the high school. And um, that was done so well where the girl's in the stall listening to her oh um, my God. headphones. And yeah. it's like, well, something's up. And so that was so fun. The, um, the imagery, the lasting imagery, uh, like I will never forget it. Um, when, and I was shocked when the cops came in and shot him. Mm-hmm. And then previously when the cops came in and he was trying to give that kid candy. You know. Yeah. Yep. And in the course, laundromat, just showing, or laundry like, room. You know, going to instant oh. violence, of course. Um, so that it made me think of that moment in Get Out when everybody oh, yeah. thinks he's like fucked because the cop came up, yeah. and it and it like it feels like it's over, but right. then it's okay because it's his friend. And then this is kind of like the flip side of like, oh god, yeah. you know, now it's not okay, and it is the reality. But it. It was so well done. The puppetry, like you said, that was used throughout the 
particular aesthetic of it was so haunting and beautiful. And I just, I can't wait to watch the original again and watch this one again. So well acted, Mm -hmm. so well directed, the music, everything. Like, could I I gush about a movie anymore? I know. we've been waiting so long for this movie, and I was thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm getting my expectations up too high. Yeah, because that can happen. Oh, yeah, especially when you're waiting a long time, and you're like, I've been so excited for this, but, like, it completely met my expectations, if not exceeded. I think think it exceeded mine, because I was like, well, obviously it's going to be awesome, but this was, like, beyond awesome. Oh. There there were two parts in particular where I was like, oh my god. So the first one you looked, we looked at each other was when he hears about the murders on the news and they talk about uh, him and his piece and he's like smiling really weird. Oh my god, yeah. That was so unsettling and scary. Because and, oh. it's like, I, I mean, I understand his conflicted feelings i mean we understand why because he's like well i'm famous now but it's like oh my god that's disgusting (laughs) yeah and so his girlfriend's like no that's not okay and then um the other thing that like will live in my head rent free is when the dude cuts his arm off and sticks the hook in his arm oh my god and his (laughs) eyes and he was just dead faced oh my god oh yeah and he's got like a tear coming down his face that That reminds me of that um was not was it a twilight zone or I don't know. Okay. Anyway, Which where one? the guy's, like, having surgery. And oh, then, yeah. And, and you can't, like, like... And, yes, he couldn't, like, speak or move. Or, yes. But he was really awake. Yes. <laughs> that was really, really scary. And it also... It was fascinating how that character kind of, like, was the boy in the beginning and, and yes. then flipped it on its head where he's like, we need Candyman. Oh, my God. And he summoned Candyman. Yeah. And let's not forget that, that Tony Todd at the end. Yeah. I mean... That was pretty cool. Oh. It was like, because they told his story of, you know, how he kind of became Candyman and how he was tortured because, he, you know, he had fallen in love with this white woman. And, oh, man, that was cool. That was also, um, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're listening right now. But stay through the credits. There's not a secret scene or anything, but there's puppetry throughout the, the sequence, the the credits. And also, just as a film goer, stay through the credits. Look at all the people who worked so hard to make this beautiful piece of art and appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. And like you said, that very lasting image of the puppetry at the end was really oh. beautiful and just darkly entrancing and... Now, I just want like 10 more movies that yeah. make me feel like that right now. Yes, I know. Directed by Nia DaCosta. She just got a beautiful eye. Oh my God. Amazing. Queen. Now I, every time I go to the movies, I'm always excited for previews, especially because a lot of times <laughs> yeah. I purposely don't watch. I mean, I used to do this more pre-pandemic, but I purposely wouldn't watch a trailer because I wanted right. to see it on the big screen. Obviously, I haven't been able to watch many on the big screen, but I'm like, let's get a bunch of new horror trailers, baby. Guess how many we had out of, like, seven? We had one horror trailer. We only yeah. had Halloween Kills. What the heck? Yeah, I don't know, like, who makes the decisions of, like, you know, what trailers get attached, but we were disappointed. And, I mean, Halloween Kills, was that that looked awesome, but I want I want seven horror trailers. I know, Please. and you know there's plenty coming yeah. out soon. yeah. Well, and uh, yeah, I am excited for Halloween Kills. It looks good. I will, I mean, I did admit when the Hall- newest Halloween movie came out, I liked it, but I didn't, like, love it. So I'm hoping maybe I like this one a little bit more. How do you feel? Yeah, I think um, I'm probably, I mean, I'm not as excited as I was to see Candyman. Yeah. But I'll, I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And, I, you know, the fun thing is we wrote about... Laurie Strode as the um, final girl, but as a, an older right. woman as a final girl. And how, she, you know, normally women of her age, which she's not I mean that old, but would definitely not be shown kicking butt. And she is a badass. Yes, she is. It's very cool. I mean, I think it's really neat to that she got to embody this character when she was like a baby. And now she's doing it again, like in this time of her life. And yes, we need more movies with older 
protagonists. In Absolutely. Them. Representation matters. Yes. So I'm excited for that aspect. And the trailer looked pretty good. Now, I think before I forget, because I'm going to talk about something else, but let's rank Candyman on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 being you hated it, 10 being it's a perfect movie. What's the scale? I feel like Hooks is a bit obvious. It could be like those pieces of candy that he was handing out or That's bees. True. Bees. Did you see that video about the bee with no wings? No. Okay, just side note. Luke showed it to me, and it's, like, going all over. There's this bee that this woman found, and it didn't have any wings, and she adopted it, and Aww. literally they're best friends, and it, like, sleeps in her hair. It's like and... the, it's like bee movie. Uh, yeah, that's what I wings. said. I know. And now they're in love. No, just kidding. Yeah. It's a bee movie. But, no, it, like, it... It literally, like, loves her and lays on her all day. And she, like, carries it around and stuff. Anyway, I'm just saying it's, like, a nice Candyman story. Aww. Where the bee doesn't sting you or anything. It Aww. bugs you. But anyway, um, let's rank it by bloody mirrors. Okay. How many? I, well, ten, obviously. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> this is not... I mean, why did we even go through this? It's so performative. <laughs> I know. I know it is. I would also give it ten wingless bees. Yes. I will give it or ten of anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, what I wanted to say is, friends, if you're listening to the podcast now and in for the next few weeks, know that we're going to be putting up some throwback episodes because, dun, dun, dun... Our newest book, The Science of Serial Killers, is coming out. So we're revisiting, replaying, reposting those podcast episodes where we talked about the real movies that were based on true crime and that we write about in our book. Like, That's what? Right. Yeah, we go even more in depth in the book, and I'm so excited for it to come out. It's going to come out soon, and we're just so thankful for your support. We've got early reviews up already, and, like, let's go. It's, it's that time of year. Oh, it's our favorite time of year, yes. and it's going to be very busy, and I know, you know, just in general, everyone's life, it's getting back to school and all that happening, but, you know, we hope to see you out safely at uh, some of our events that we'll be doing, Be you know, look for our social media for that, we'll be um, out in LA for a while, we'll be in northern Minnesota, southern Minnesota, we'll be virtually places. It's it's going to be very busy, so you're not getting rid of us. <laughs> and always you can check out horrorrewind.com and see what we're up to as well. We have an events page on there. Yes. So um, what are you going to dress as for Halloween, Meg? I don't know, because I think we have, like, multiple events going. We do. And see, I'm not like you. I'm not as well planned. I will, like, th like two days beforehand be like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have all your outfits already. Well, I, I was going to say I already do. You already do, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I ordered them in July. I'm, oh, but boy. It's see? fine. But one of yours is planned already, because I got us Grady Girls dresses. Yes, I mean, they're Grady you Girl were in charge. I got a Grady Girl dress, thank God. I have, see, I have this, like, Jason jersey that I wear yeah. all the time, but I guess, I think it's time to, you know, I need to, like, bring it to the next level. Yeah. I need, need to Nia DaCosta, Nia DaCosta this bitch. Yeah. I think I keep telling you, I think just, a, like, the goth Lydia or the bride Lydia would yeah. be a perfect costume for you. Yeah. Okay. I and agree. I can do, like, a Beetlejuice thing. Like, I can Ooh, do, like, a striped suit, like, cute. a girl boss suit. That would be cute. Because aren't you, wait, can I reveal yes. what you're, you're going to be promising young woman, yeah. Cassie, and uh -huh. then I'm going to be... Nina. I'm, no, I'm going to oh, be Oh, yeah, Bo you're going to be Bo Burnham. I'm going to be Bo Burnham because I'm 5'1", so it'll be really it'll funny. It'll be really funny. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> See, I've already forgotten that because... But, I'm, but I am going to have cute makeup on. No, of course. You but should I'll wear, just wear a, a doctor's coat and I'll a wear a doctor's coat and a stethoscope. Over something cute. I should cute. be able to find that. Yeah. Oh, my God, Meg, I... I remember now. Yeah. You're Ryan and I'm Cassie and yeah. I and you're in so much trouble. I know. I'm a problematic white man. <sighs> so that'll be fun. That's I'm right. I'm going to be that. And people will say, are you Bo Burnham? And I'll be like, yeah. Obviously. Obviously. Now, can't see, you tell? Now, we already have three costumes planned. Get a Lydia one and I'll be okay. Beetlejuice. All done. Right. Done. We're done. We're and done. we're giving you all ideas, okay? These are couples yeah. slash BFF costume yeah. goals. Like, yes. go. Yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. I what more do you want? I decide what Lydia I want to be. I think wedding Lydia. I know. It's so epic. 
It is. Because I no, always wanted that dress. Oh, my God. No, you need it. I was going to say, like, regular goth Lydia, that's just you every day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, In the best way. Thank you. And so the wedding, the wed, the wed, red <laughs> wedding dress. Oh, it's been a weekend, friends. Yeah. It's, we're recording this on Sunday, and we have been working our butts off to bring yep. you more content. Yep. Get ready. You don't even know what's yep. coming down the pipeline. It's so exciting. That's right. So we're kind of, like, delirious at this point. Yeah. but And also, like, the fact that we got to see Candyman this weekend. Oh, my gosh. No, it was just like, you know what? And we're together, which yeah. is, you know, always nice. <sighs> okay, we hope you are well. We hope you are um, enjoying this last week of um, not not like official summer because I realize summer goes for a while yet. But you know, after Labor Day, it feels like summer's over. Yeah, and be safe, everyone. That weather is not okay right now. Oh wow, yeah. It's like people we, are in we, bad situations. Oh yeah, and we even ourselves witnessed yeah. a tree fall on the house yesterday. <laughs> yes. The house is fine and everybody's okay. But... Everybody's fine. The deck is a little broken, but that's okay because people are going through some harsh shit. Oh my gosh, yeah. I yeah. Oh, we can't end on this note. I no. mean, we want okay, so to let's... be well. But let's see, let's see the things to look forward to. Halloween kills. Halloween kills. Halloween. Yeah. I want to go to Michael's soon cuz they have a little like um dollhouse that you can buy and like fill it with Halloween stuff. Okay, I want that. Yeah, we should go. Okay, I want that. And yeah. and Spirit Halloweens are opening. Yes. And fall, like the it's going to get colder and the leaves can are literally going to fall. Sweaters. Oh my god. I'm so tired of like my armpits being out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cover them again. <laughs> oh, we all want that, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have lovely armpits. Oh, it's thanks. fine. <laughs> now, on that note, until yep. next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.